The Ontario Building Code is dead. Long live the Ontario Building Code. I decided to do this video in a bit of a podcast style format. I feel obliged to share somewhat of a public service message on some huge building industry news that's much more local to Canada this time around, specifically my province of Ontario. Might be useful to as many registered plumbing apprentices, licensed plumbers, and everyone else involved in the construction industry. If you are a registered Ontario apprentice working toward your license, you're going to want to hang around and listen to this as this news will help clear up some confusion that's been lingering about the recent provincial code changes you might want to know about as you get closer to challenging your certificate of qualification exam. My American International audience is also welcomed and actually encouraged to follow along and comment and dare I say you might even find this interesting as it will provide a peek under the hood on how our construction industry is governed here in Canada. Okay, on with the big news. As of January 1st, 2025, the province of Ontario has finally adopted Canada's National Plumbing Code, or NBC. Well, kind of. Not really. Allow me to explain. Up until December 31st, 2024, less than about a month ago from this recording, most all building construction requirements, including plumbing, were governed by the Ontario Building Code, OBC for short, legally known as Ontario Regulation 332-12, and completely independent of Canada's National Building Code, NBC. If you're not familiar with it, the Ontario Building Code was a massive two-volume legal document consisting of thousands of pages and details all building construction requirements across most trades, including structural design, HVAC, fire protection, and of course plumbing, which has traditionally been part of Part 7 OBC. Here's the thing. Starting back in 2006, significant changes were made to the OBC in an attempt to somewhat harmonize the Ontario Building Code with its national counterpart, the National Building Code. But as far as I can tell, a formal intention to actively harmonize the two codes never existed. Until now. Although the two code books somewhat mirrored each other, they weren't exactly the same. And it appears that Ontario's code remained the stricter of the two, at least as far as I can tell when plumbing is concerned. With respect to plumbing, the biggest difference is that Ontario kept plumbing in the same volume set as the rest of the building code, known as Part 7 OBC while the NBC maintains a completely separate publication for plumbing, aptly titled National Plumbing Code or NPC. But otherwise, the sections and many clauses between the two remain very similar, aside from Ontario's Plumbing Code having been preceded by a 7, while the National Plumbing Code clauses commence with a 2. For example, probably the OBC's most well-known sizing table, Table 7493, which lists fixture unit loads and fixture outlet pipe sizes, could be found with almost identical information in the NPC, except the latter refers to it as Table 2493. And it's important for an Ontario apprentice to know this because although instructors are mandated by the Ontario government to teach the Ontario Building Code in trade school, simply because that's the code that's actually applied for building specifications and inspection within the province, in order for qualified apprentices to receive their plumbing license, they're required to challenge the National Plumbing Exam, which is based upon the National Plumbing Code a code they were never asked to study for most of trade school, until it gets sprung up on them upon completion of their final academic trade school level. Although being thrown the National Plumbing Code at the 11th hour understandably feels like a bit of a bait and switch for apprentices and could be frustrating for those who've been spending five years of their professional lives learning only provincial code, I encourage you that there's good reason for this requirement. This is because, also commencing around 2006, all apprentices of all trades in Ontario who successfully pass a respective Certificate of Qualification licensing exam would automatically earn what's known as a Red Seal Certification, which essentially grants the new journeyman legal permission to practice their trade interprovincially in any province or territory anywhere in Canada. Prior to this, journeymen licensed by the province of Ontario were only allowed to practice within their own province unless they achieved a final exam mark of 85% or greater on their CFQ, thus automatically granting them the coveted Red Seal certification without having to actively study the National Code. Don't ask me how that logic worked. Since 2006, all apprentices automatically get their Red Seal certification, but they got to write an exam based on the National Code to prove they know what they're doing. Again, fortunately for our apprentices, National Provincial Plumbing Codes have remained somewhat similar to each other. To help with this necessary transition from provincial to national code in order to earn their license, apprentices who complete their final academic level and graduate from trade school are provided one additional academic week to become familiar with and practice using the otherwise obscure National Building Code. And this is why this recent Ontario Building Code update, effective January 1st, 2025, is helpful for fledgling apprentices to know. Because never before now have the provincial and national codes resembled each other so closely. 
because the main purpose of this recent Ontario Code update is to finally adopt the national code in its entirety. But as is typical with government, it's complicated. And here's why. Rather than simply swap out the old Ontario Building Code, OREG 332-12, with the National Building Code 2020 and the National Plumbing Code 2020, it's Canada's latest version, the old Ontario Code has since been replaced or amended with new Ontario Building Code OREG 163-24. And here it is in all its single-page glory. By the way, I'll leave all the web links to these references in the show notes below so that you can download them for yourself. So this is Formal Ontario Regulation 163-24, and this is what has officially replaced or revoked Ontario Regulation 332-12 as of January 1st, 2025. So what it does say, this one-page document, which is the new building code, and replaces that massive document, 332-12, that has been in effect since 2012, it says this code issued by the Canadian Commission on Building and Fire Codes, part of the National Research Council of Canada, that is actually the body that's responsible for creating the National Building Code, known as blah, 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 National Building Code of Canada. Here it is. So right in the flesh, it said so right here. So reading this, we can assume that we are adopting the National Building Code. However, goes on to say, as amended, by the document entitled Ontario Amendments of the National Building Code of Canada 2020. So right here, it says straight out that it's not quite adopting the National Building Code. So what are these amendments? Then this center body here refers to the transition. We'll talk about this a little bit later on, essentially when this new code takes effect. So this one page is the building code and it's revoking 332-12. A quick peek at 332-12, which is still available online if you do want to uh, download it and see it for yourself. It's there. It's just obsolete now. And it goes on and on and on. And if we do go down, we can eventually, after many, many, many pages, we can find our part seven for plumbing. And this is our part seven for plumbing. But this is obsolete. And it's been replaced by this. Okay. So let's move on to a simpler page, which is the 2024 Ontario Building Code that is on the Ontario.ca, Ontario Government website. And this gives a bit of an overview of what we can expect, a little bit of a simplification, so to speak. So what I wanna point out, it says right here that the Ontario Building Code regulation has changed. The new building code regulation is, a one, page is one page long. That's that one page we just read and adopts the National Building Code of Canada 2020, except where it is amended by the Ontario Amendment document, that is the Ontario Amendments to the National Building Code of Canada 2020. The full length version of the building code will no longer be available on e-laws. I take issue with that, we'll talk about that later on. Email us to request a copy of the Ontario Amendment document. Now the actual, it's not called Ontario Amendment document. What it is, if you go up here, it actually says, that is called the 2024 Building Code Compendium. So what's changed? Well, at least as far as plumbing is concerned, not much has changed from the Ontario Code, literally. On the surface, you'd think that from this point forward, you can pretty much pick up the National Building Code and you're generally good to go in Ontario, as long as we abide by these new Ontario amendments. I mean, how many amendments could there possibly be? When I think of compendium, I picture some sort of supporting document to the primary document. Maybe a few extra pages. This is the 2024 Building Code Compendium, Volume 1. And if you look at it, this is only Volume 1, granted. The first volume consists of 1,259 pages. The National Building Code, on the other hand, contains 1,530 pages. Hardly a compendium, I would reason. Just call it a new Ontario code book, period. Maybe one day the province will finally actually fully transition to the National Building Code, but certainly not yet. At least with respect to plumbing, unlike the separate National Building Code 2020, which I have right here, Ontario's plumbing code still simply remains part seven of the entire Ontario Building Code, with very few apparent changes, although I did notice some. 
For example, the wordiness of section 7345 on hangar spacing for different piping materials has adopted MPC's more user-friendly and organized table format. Before this compendium update, this was just a jumble of words that you had to sort of figure out how far spacing, hangar spacing should have been for each material. The new Ontario compendium on the left is just overall a lot more user-friendly. At the same time, Ontario's famous table 7493, which you see here on the left side, which lists fixture outlet pipe sizes and hydraulic loads for common fixtures, remains somewhat untouched from its previous iteration, while at the same time it could have benefited from the National Code version's update, namely with respect to shower drains. The Ontario Plumbing Code still specifies shower drain load based on number of heads, which is very obscure, whereas the National Plumbing Code lists shower drains in a more practical manner basing it on the number of liters per minute that are discharging through the drain rather than obscure number of shower heads. Otherwise, the fixture of pipe sizes and the fixture unit loads remain the same. Haven't really changed. Sorry, but I would say this is a completely missed opportunity by not updating it properly because in this case, the National Plumbing Code is right in determining showers in liters per minute rather than shower heads. And finally, while not a deal breaker and not particularly new, it's annoying to have the very useful Appendix A in a completely separate Volume 2 than the main code, which is in Volume 1. Again, the National Plumbing Code simply keeps this version of Appendix A, what they call Notes to Part 2 Plumbing Systems, together with the main code in the same publication. Some other notable points. The new Ontario Building Code will no longer be available to the public via e-laws which is Ontario government website that allows for the downloading of legal documents. Now, at the same time, the old code always has been and currently still is completely available and downloadable for free in Word format or immediately directly printed right off the eLaws website. Nonetheless, if you want to get your copy of the new Ontario Building Code Compendium, you can do so by ordering a print copy for 200 bucks from Publications Ontario, which will open up this page and they will send you a paper version uh, once you proceed with payment. Another way to do it is to actually get yourself a free version by hitting this button here, request a digital copy for non-commercial use. And if you do that, it will open up this web page here and you will just simply fill in your information, your primary role, and what is your purpose for obtaining this. Where do you live, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, warning that it's not for copyright use, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, that's one way to get it. The caveat with this is that for some strange reason, even though this is technically law, you cannot print out the Ontario Building Code in any capacity whatsoever. So what that means is like out of its massive 2000 plus volume of pages, if you need a small excerpt of code, you can't do that because it's password protected even for printing. In my opinion, it's quite stupid and counteractive to encourage people to do the right thing and abide by the code, which is technically legislated law. And as far as I'm concerned, all law should be readily accessible for everyone, not through some email form requests and limited in how it's used. Even our arguably otherwise ridiculously incompetent federal government has to be given credit for making their building code and plumbing codes immediately available online for free and its entirety. Why our provincial government has withdrawn from making the provincial code easily available as they've always done in the past is nothing short of baffling. Okay, another point I want to make is the transition period. So there's going to be a three month transition period between the old Ontario Building Code and the new Ontario Building Code. So if your permit was issued before January 1st, 2025, you can continue to abide by the old 2012 code. If your drawings were issued, before January 1st, 2025, then you can apply for a building permit under the old Ontario 2012 code only up until March 31st, 2025. Then starting April 1st, 2025, all drawings, permit applications, and subsequent work has to comply with the 2024 OBC. So in summary, I think it suffices to say that even though Ontario claims that they finally adopted the National Building Code, they're far from done so and that the Ontario code is still a completely independent entity unto itself. Notably, considering that the so-called amendments are even bigger than the national code book they claim to have adopted. The reality is that this new Ontario Building Code change comes across as nothing more than an intention or perhaps a formal commencement of perhaps an eventual transition toward harmonizing our two codes. 
albeit far from that at the moment. The good news is that not much has changed from the last Ontario Code, at least not in the realm of plumbing. For you plumbing apprentices out there, I encourage you to download a copy of this National Plumbing Code as soon as you can and start getting familiar with the differences as soon as possible. Because although they are similar, the two codes are clearly not interchangeable. And that's not something you want to explore during your CFQ exam. So let me know your thoughts on this new OBC change, or even what you think of this more free-flowing podcast-like format. In the meantime, if you want to see how plumbing code actually gets applied to real-life scenarios, be sure to check out these two videos right here.